Welcome to the biology section of our practice MCAT questions. In this video, we're going to be going through questions 36 to 40. So first, I'll show you guys the questions so you can pause the video and attempt them on your own. Here's question 36, 37, 38, 39, and 40. Now let's go through the questions together. In question 36, it says cephalopods, like cuttlefish, contain chromatophores, which are specialized pigment-containing organelles in cells. These cells most closely resemble which of the following mammalian cells? So cuttlefish have a certain type of cell, and what they are are pigment-containing organelles in these cells. And then we want to match them to some type of ma mammalian cell. So in mammals, which cell also contains pigments? Well, it's not erythrocytes, which are red blood cells. It's not hepatocytes, which are liver cells. It's not adipocytes either, which are fat cells, and melanocytes is the correct answer. Melanocytes are part of the skin, they contain pigment, and they're what give us different skin colors. So because this is a cell in mammals which contains pigment, it is pretty much the one which most closely resembles the same type of pigment cell in the cuttlefish, so D is the correct answer. In question 37, it says the vena cava contain what? So the vena cava, you have a superior one and an inferior one, they are major veins which bring blood back to the heart. So since they are veins, they're not bringing oxygenated blood to the heart, but deoxygenated blood, and they're bringing it to the heart. So option D is correct. It's deoxygenated blood returning to the heart. B is incorrect because deoxygenated blood does not leave the heart. It comes to the heart as deoxygenated blood, and then it's it's pumped back. Well, deoxygenated blood can also leave the heart because it can go towards the lungs, but the vena cava specifically bring back blood from the systemic circuit, not the pulmonary circuit, and so they're bringing back deoxygenated blood towards the heart. In question 38, it says rods are primarily responsible for what? So rods, their function is low acu acuity vision and they're responsible for low light vision showing us black and white images. So it's not A or B. Color vision and high acuity vision are for cones, not rods. And it's not vision within the blind spot either because a blind spot is the spot where you can't see from. So there are no photoreceptors in the blind spot. There's just the nerves exiting the back of the eye. So there are no photoreceptor cells there, so no rods or cones. But D is correct. Rods are primarily responsible for low light vision. In question 39, we're asked which of the following is false regarding autosomal recessive genes. So false and autosomal recessive. So option A is saying that the, so what this means is like if you have this as the two alleles, so you can be heterozygous, you can be homozygous dominant, but only when you're homozygous recessive, that's when you will have the given phenotype for whatever this, this disease is. So option A is saying the incident rate is roughly equal in males and females. And yeah, that's fine. There is no reason for that to be false. It would be false if it was a sex-linked gene, but we're talking about an autosomal one. Option B is saying the disease is present if one or both chromosomes have the defective gene. And so that would be incorrect because for something to be autosomal recessive, that means that if you had the heterozygous one, so this first one over here, if you had that, then the dominant allele would take over, and so you wouldn't see the recessive phenotype. So you can only have it if you see two copies of the recessive allele, and that would mean that both chromosomes have to have the, recess the defective gene. So option B is incorrect because it's saying one or both chromosomes can have the defective gene, but no, both of them need it. So now option C is saying the gene is not found on a sex chromosome. That is correct because that's the definition of an autosomal gene, meaning it's on a chromosome other than the sex chromosome. And then option D is saying offspring from an afflicted parent and a non -carrier, sorry, a non-carrier parent cannot be afflicted with the disease. So if you have an afflicted parent, that means you have someone with an autosomal recessive a genotype, and then you have a non-carrier parent and the only way for them to be non-carrier, that would, that would be if they had two dominant alleles. And so all of their offspring then are going to be heterozygous. And that's correct what option D is saying. Offspring from an afflicted parent, 
So autosomal recessive or yeah, homozygous recessive and then a non-carrier parent, they cannot be afflicted with the disease, cannot be afflicted. That's correct because they will all be heterozygous and you need to have two copies of the recessive allele to get the disease. So B is the correct answer here. In question 40, we're asked which of the following statements regarding capillaries is false. So we're talking about capillaries and we're saying which one is false, the rest are true. Option A is saying capillaries are the smallest blood vessels in the body. And yes, that's correct. They are smaller than veins or arteries or venules and arterioles. Option B is saying capillary walls are one cell thick. That's also correct. Option C is saying capillaries dead end. So they dead end and then they return the deoxygenated deoxygenated blood to their original arteri arterioles which led which lead directly to venules that's incorrect they do not dead end it do, it's not like you leave from the heart and then you get arteries and arterioles and capillaries and then that's the end and then the deoxygenated blood somehow has to mix with the oxygenated blood no that's not what happens in humans it goes from arteries first to arterioles then to capillaries and then the capillaries lead into venules so it's the it's the capillaries which lead directly to venules not the arterioles and then the venules go to veins and then the veins go back to the heart so capillaries they do not they do not dead end so this option is false and this statement is false which makes option c the correct answer for this question and finally option d is saying nonpolar molecules such as gases diffuse through capillary walls without special transport mechanisms yeah the cell wall is only one centimeter thick, or sorry, one cell thick, and yeah, much smaller than a centimeter even. And so gases can diffuse freely through the capillary wall because there, there really isn't that much of a space that they really need to go through. So yeah, D is correct, and that's one of the reasons why capillaries are used for gas diffusion in the lungs. So that's it for the questions in this video. If you like what you saw, make sure to check out our course on teachable.com. The link is in the description below. In that course, we go through a lot more questions and then go through all of the answer options explaining why they're right or wrong. And other than that, make sure to subscribe to our channel to keep up to date with all the videos that we post here. That's it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one.